usually the time period is from December to mid January. If you are you if you are applying in those period, then you have a higher chance of getting an acceptance with a scholarship. So, uh, while you are applying uh in at the any any of the universities, let's say it's before the deadline of that university, while you are submitting the letter of recommendations, uh, the professor or the person who is submitting the letter of recommendation on your behalf, they get an option of whether this person should get a scholarship of or not. Yes, so I they applied. get to just the Eastern Coast universities because my approach towards my career was going more towards business decisions uh, uh, rather than just focusing on tech. So East Coast has much more financial or fintech companies available. So I applied to all the Eastern Coast uh, universities. Uh, my CGPA in my undergraduate was 7.85 on a scale of 10. Uh, my GRE score was 310 out of 340. And my TOEFL score was 98 out of Okay, guys, so uh, today we have with us Kush Shah, and uh, he uh, did his BTEC uh, from Nirma University, uh, 2023 batch, and he, current, he is currently pursuing his master's in George Washington University in data modeling, warehouse, and database administration. So we'll get to know his journey of how uh, he, got in, he got into that college and what process he went through. He also has gotten some scholarship, so we'll get to know that journey about it also. So yeah, Kush, you can introduce yourself and then we can proceed further. Definitely. Thank you so much, Kanak, for introducing me. So, hey guys, my name is Kush Shah. As Kanak mentioned, I have done my undergraduate at Nirma University where my major was in electronics and communications while I did my minor specialization in computer science. Uh, I graduated in June 23 and I directly came here for my master's at George Washington University. So I applied for my master's in the majors of data science and uh, this is the, currently my second semester going on here. Uh, other than that, I have a few internship experiences with me. I appeared for uh, the examinations which were required to uh, appear for the applications here. Uh, overall, yeah, that would be my uh, major introduction right now. Great, great introduction, Kush. So now we'll proceed. So first question is, uh, I know that you had a placement offer, right? But uh, why yeah. did you choose to go for master's over placements? So I had a placement offer and I even got a PPO. But the major reason for me pursuing my master's was I was uh, oriented more towards research. Uh, definitely job was something that I was looking for some financial stability. But uh, uh, given my research experience, even in my undergraduate and uh, uh, while I was working on a publication, on a research paper as well. So I believe that in US, there is much more scope if you want to move forward with your research. Also post research, there are too many opportunities for an individual uh, in the corporate life. So that attracted me towards pursuing my master's in US. Okay. So uh, now we'll start with uh, when did you think of going to master's? And now if you have thought you gave your GRE and TOEFL exams and all. So what was the time when you thought I'm choosing master's and like you can take us to that journey? Definitely. So uh, during my second year of undergraduate, I was somewhat uh, taking the decisions whether I should do my master's or not. And uh, once I was in my sixth semester, so I dedicatedly give my time towards pursuing my master's applications on all the competitive exams. So at that time, I... Uh, allocated serious time towards GRE and TOEFL so that I can appear for those in uh, around uh, later half of 2022. So uh, uh, it was that period when I was quite confirmed that I want to pursue my master's particularly in data science. Uh, and I appeared for GRE and TOEFL in August 2022 and December 2022 respectively. So, uh, so I pre-planned such that at least three months before I started with a dedicated time schedule that every day I need to practice for these uh, examinations uh, so that while I'm appearing, I am not too much nervous in that examinations. Yeah. So uh, now coming to what uh, score did you get in both of the exams and also like uh, overall profile of your with CGP and how many research papers you had? Sure. So uh, my CGPA in my undergraduate was 7.85 on a scale of 10. Uh, my GRE score was 310 out of 340. And my TOEFL score was 98 out of 120. Uh, 
and overall like uh, i i also appeared for an additional exam called duolingo english test so i scored 120 out of 160 in that examination so this were overall uh, my uh, examination scores okay so it was these are the major factors uh, uh, that colleges look into uh, in like cgpa gre tofel uh, research paper and uh, you know which branch you are from so you are from electronics and communication so yeah you were wanting to do masters in uh, like data science, computer science, or like what? What was your field of interest? In? Yeah, so uh, I had this subject called data science and my minor specialization. So while I was pursuing that subject, and I also did an internship as a data scientist, which got me intrigued more towards data science uh, rather than going into electronics. So uh, it pushed me more forward and. Coming from a business background, I was always interested into getting insights from the data. So that was one of the major reasons to pursue my master's in data science. Also, as you mentioned, uh, as I mentioned previously, that I was working on a research paper uh, with a professor at uh, in at Nirma University. So it further pushed me to you know pursue research, uh, pursue all the related fields in data science, and you know pursue my master's uh, here at US. So now this is your profile. Now uh, it's I I think December twenty twenty two, and you start applying for universities. So what all universities yeah. did you choose for, and like what all factors did you keep in mind, and how many universities you applied, and like safe, ambitious, and also maybe you can take up for that. Definitely. So uh, I uh, once I appeared for my TOEFL exam, I started to prepare my profile for which universities I will be eligible to apply to. So usually in certain universities as US, you have a criteria of that you should have a CGPA of eight out of on the scale of 10. So I did not apply in those universities because it was too competitive while I was applying. I majorly applied into five universities. I applied at Stevens Institute of Technology. I applied at George Washington University. I applied at University of Albany, uh, at Northeastern University and University of Maryland. Um, uh, then I got admits from Stevens Institute of Technology and George Washington University. So that was overall, I, usually the time period is from December to mid-January. If you, up, you if you are applying in those periods, then you have a higher chance of getting an acceptance with a scholarship. Great, great. Yeah, so uh, you got admits from two universities. So like, uh, yeah. was it in scholarship and did you apply? explicitly for scholarship or like uh, they they just gave you the scholarship based on your profile so uh while you are applying uh in at the any any of the universities let's say it's before the deadline of that university while you're submitting the letter of recommendations uh, the professor or the person who is submitting the letter of recommendation on your behalf they get an option of whether this person should get a scholarship or, or not. So they can tick yes or no in that particular section. And also while you are applying, you might get a, a chance to, uh, you know, select whether you want to apply for a scholarship or not. So usually if your profile is strong enough, the, uh, the universities provide your scholarship for your education here. But it majorly depends on the person who is applying for you know, the letter of recommendation on your behalf. If they are selecting, then you have a very high chance of getting a scholarship. If you're talking about LOR, letter of recommendation, I yeah. think generally most of the universities require three LORs. Some of them require yes. two. But uh, so what was that? You gave one professor LOR and two your internship LOR, like, or, or what was the ratio? So uh, I applied total three LORs in all of the universities. So two of them were academic. So there were two professors which uh, under whom I had uh, some projects that I had gone under through in my undergraduate. And one was a professional letter of recommendation where I, uh, when I worked as a data science intern, I got a letter of recommendation from there. Great, great, great. So, uh, okay, now you got admits from here. Now you got two admits, right? Uh, so yeah. how did you choose that I need to go to this university? Like, was it the location or like some other factors? So uh, to be honest, I applied to just the Eastern Coast universities because my approach towards my career was going more towards business decisions uh, uh, rather than just focusing on tech. 
so east coast has much more financial or fintech companies available so i applied to all the eastern coast uh, universities uh, selecting between stevens and george washington was bit of a, a dilemma for me but uh, i got higher sc double scholarship uh, in comparison to stevens uh, that i got from george washington university so yeah it was uh, it got more preference and also dc was a much more safer area uh, definitely new jersey is also safe but if you look because dc is the capital of us so the security is much high in comparison to other states or other parts in uh, us also i connected with all the alumni and all the uh, current graduate students at both the universities and then i got a positive feedback more towards george washington so i selected george washington as my university yeah safety is also in because i i've seen in baltimore like that side uh, the safety issues there so generally people yeah, yeah. don't prefer to go in umbc and all the school colleges okay so okay now you got into this program so now first thing that people think is uh, getting there and the living thing where do you live yeah so how did you make connections there and how did you figure out this uh, living thing and all definite so uh, i started to make connections from linkedin uh, linkedin is a great source of connection uh, social media point of view because you get to know all the list of the graduate students that are currently pursuing the master in the university that you have applied to second we got a uh, access to the college whatsapp group from the so our university created a facebook page of the communities that are going to join the university for the upcoming batches and from there you can create more connects and um, because i preferred more towards pure vegetarian roommates so i started to connect with people who were who were looking just for pure vegetarian roommates and that's how i got a connect uh luckily i got a connect with one of the seniors uh who had started his masters with uh, a semester before us so he was living here for 6 months before we came here so he had much of experience how uh, you know which locality would be much more beneficial for us so that was a major help for us other than that you can uh, go to uh, zillo or you can go to apart apartments.com where you can search for good localities so they have a uh, locality scoring out there where you can analyze which locality is much more safer for you so even in dc there might be a few localities where you preferably you should not go there as a student for living so you can check out such uh, websites and then select where you want to uh, uh, live or where you want to find a rented apartment for yourself so now you figured out where to live and also now you are landing at in, in us right uh, yeah so what what now what does the fee like the rent and all of living cost look like so the living cost usually depends on which part of us you are located into so let's say you are living in arizona it's much more cheaper than arizona texas it's much more cheaper than many parts of us talking about where i live i currently live in pentagon city arlington virginia which is just besides uh, washington dc so currently it's usually around 800 to 900 dollars a month including rent utilities and my uh, food cost and everything miscellaneous you can include into that so you can expect anything between 800 dollars to 1000 dollars a month uh, in, at a living expense in us this is an average that a student usually spends and this is for sharing or like you are living alone in that room so we have currently rented a 3 bhk apartment and uh, six of us are sharing this apartment so we have a split of rent between us okay okay so now coming to the curriculum that university has so like how is the curriculum is it like more stressful or like chill side and like uh, and com in comparison with the indian curriculum that you face in nirma university so uh the we ha we have only three subjects a semester and uh, we have only one class of a, sub a subject in a week so we have two and a half hours of a class and uh, there are such three classes and you can opt on which day on and on which schedule you want to uh, you know uh, choose your classes so that's the major freedom that you have here uh, in comparison to the indian curriculum uh, the curriculum here is more focused towards the application rather than focusing more into theory because many of the professors here have good experience in the 
corporate life as well so they usually are into the current trends what uh, the industry really needs from the students uh, i was lucky enough in nirma that i had a set of professors who were more focused towards the application and not just theory so but definitely because in undergraduate you have 6 to 7 subjects at a point in one semester and you just have three subjects uh, at a point in the, in your masters so you have spare time to you know upgrade your skills here that is the major difference that i feel uh, uh is in uh, between the undergraduate in india and masters in us other than that uh, it is not compulsory that every subject might have a final written exam there might be a possibility that instead of exam there might be a final group project that you need to submit here or probably a research article that you need to submit to the professor uh, so you don't have all the exam load at a point in during the final so that's the major difference between the indian curriculum and the us curriculum great great, great. okay so uh, now uh, if students uh, want to you know earn something there there are some on campus opportunities where they can work and get some money hourly basis right so what yeah. about your universities like uh, are there any ga or ta positions and if there are how difficult is it to get how how much is the competition and what what is the pay scale look like uh so that's a really great question that was even something that we when we started to apply we were also you know asking out our seniors and the professors so in particularly talking about george washington university we have a student uh, portal a job portal where you can see the listed jobs and then you can apply so here we have two segments one is the non federal work service and we have a federal work service so this is more of a, a, a segmentation between the us citizens and the uh, international students but it uh, we will go into that much later but uh, the international students can apply just to the non fws uh, jobs here talking about ta and ga positions so it's more dependent on whether the professor has funding for his research, for their research work or not so let's say that a professor has uh, enough funding for their research work so they will post out a graduate assistant position on that portal and through that portal you can apply and then the professor will scrutinize all the profiles and then they will uh, further communicate with their decisions uh, for uh, teaching assistantships uh, for uh, george washington university the policy is that you need to first take that subject in your masters and in the next in the upcoming semesters you can be a ta for that particular subject let's say there is a subject called data warehousing if i have taken that subject in my first semester then i am eligible to apply for the teachers assistant position in the upcoming semesters uh, so this is overall the scenario uh, definitely because there are so much smart minds around you so there is a competition in applying for the jobs even if they are not assistantship based jobs there are so many other jobs available in the communications field in the marketing field in the projects field that you can apply but usually there is a lot of competition that uh, applies to that particular job uh, but overall if you are able to pass the first semester and if the influx of the international students is not so much in in the ratio then there are higher chances of you getting a on campus job probably in the second or the third semester and uh, uh, talking about the pay uh, you usually get anywhere between 17 to 23 dollars an hour and because you are on a f1 visa particularly talking about united states then you can work at most 20 hours a week so that is how the uh, payment or the working hours work in united states and this this pay scale is for all ta ga and on campus jobs or it differs so this is uh, for on campus jobs so as i mentioned that for gas it's more dependent on what amount of the funding research or uh, the research uh, work has got the funding for that particular professor uh, for tas there is a limited uh, uh, set of amount that is uh, uh set as a salaries for the uh, teacher assistants so they don't have a hour, more of a, a they have more of a monthly based pay uh, based pay rather than hourly based pay other than that if it's any other on campus job then it's a hourly based pay for them and are these ta and ga positions very hectic uh, or like how what's the day to day job look like so uh 
the ta's job is more towards assessing the papers and helping out the professors to create new lecture materials or uh, assess the homeworks or assess the quizzes or assess the examinations for the professor or create uh, questionnaires for the professor uh, if talking about a graduate assistant for the professor then that person is working more towards into what let's say that a professor is working into the field of artificial intelligence or natural language processing then the assistant will help that professor into that particular field only uh, a teacher's assistant uh, can work up to 10 hours a week while as for graduate assistant the uh, person can work up to 20 hours a week so that's the difference between both of those jobs great great Mm -hmm. so uh, now coming to uh, full time and internship opportunities uh, i i know yeah. like uh, you are just in first year maybe but uh, you might have idea of how your seniors got placed and all and i have also heard that there are no on campus things in us then really like it's in india like colleges have the placement cell so how, how does yeah. this thing work like everything is off campus or, or what does it look like so it depends on which university you are usually going to uh here in us the alumni network is much more stronger than the placement cell so there is no particular placement cell how it works in india so uh currently talking about the job market it's very competitive right now because there is a huge influx of international students uh, that have enrolled themselves in the post covid years so the competition is really tough for me particularly i have been applying to the summer 2024 positions for internships particularly related to my field uh, there there is too much of competition even if you are looking towards applying to linkedin or through any other career job site uh, about the full time jobs yes there are very few seniors who have currently got a full time job uh, but if you are working let's say on an on campus job that is related to it or stem then they allow you to work post graduation as well so that you are at least able to stay in united states till your visa ends uh other than that uh, i would say that linkedin is a great source of networking where you can connect to your alumni uh, and at least you can if you are able to connect with a decent alumni you can get a referral for your job so you are at least one step ahead than the competition uh i would say there is no particular placement cell that which is active in any of the university in united states yes there are a few companies that have tie ups with the universities uh, let's say that uh, capital one is one of the companies here they have a set of universities there they particularly go for placement in that university because the alumni might be stronger in capital one for those universities so there are certain cases of uh the company coming directly to the campus for the recruitment uh, other than that it's just off campus uh applications that you have to go through so the university is not obliged to you to get a compulsory placement for you definitely they are 100% dedicated towards you know you getting a job there are dedicated officers that you know uh, help you to how navigate through all these difficulties and how you can apply how you can uh, curate your resumes or your cover letters but you need to be proactive from your side as well for that so uh, as you know now we are away from home in us so uh, what are the events that are happening to make like you know uh, you feel uh, involved in that activity and you don't feel homesick and also is it like very lively community or it's very dull type so uh, here in us usually by 8 and 9 pm everything closes down every shop every restaurant usually closes by 8 9 pm in the evening uh, in the first few months definitely each and every person feels a bit of homesickness because you are away from your family you don't have easy access to going back to your home country so i would say to meet up uh different communities uh if i am talking about my university they have so many cultural events going on continuously over the semester where there are mocktail parties there are uh cookie parties where you can go there are dinner parties you can go uh converse with other people and get yourself lively probably even relax a bit so this is how you can you know uh relax yourself and get over homesickness over a period of time 
uh, other than uh, other than that you can also uh, explore the city around if you have a good public transport then definitely i would recommend to explore the city that's a huge way of coping up with homesickness great great and now coming to the final question so any yeah. final advice that you have for students who are applying for ms in us so i would say that uh, be sure why you want to apply for your masters it should not be like my friend is going for masters and i am also obliged to go for my master at masters at us you need to be very sure whether you want to do this or not second pre plan this from your third uh, third year of your undergraduate so you have enough time to start up like if you are in college if you have experience then i would say that you can start this deciding on the applications and all the processes 6 months before the uh, semester you want to enter whether it's fall or spring uh, the final advice i would give is like get at least 310 above or above score in gre or a 100 plus score in toefl it gives you a really good boost in your applications and if you are interested in applying for toefl or ielts then i would suggest go for duolingo it's much more cheaper it's much more convenient you can give it from your home and the prep is also easy you get unlimited practice tests uh in duolingo and uh, if you are well enough prepared for your verbal in gre then you are really good to go for your verbal in toefl or ielts or in duolingo that would be my parting advice for all my students great 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 advice khusha and uh, yeah thank you for uh, giving all this advice uh, i hope it would be helpful to many of them so yeah definitely thank you so much kanak for uh, connecting with me and understanding what my insights were it was a really pleasure connecting with you and sharing great great okay yeah we'll meet